Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for episode four of the final season of Ted Lasso. We're going to go ahead and hop into this episode, guys. If you want to see the following three action, as always, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you're a member of the channel, get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes when you're actually in the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover in the channel. You also get to suggest and vote what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage, trying to make it worth your while. So, you're going to support channel. But, guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. Enjoy this reaction. Please do like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. That all said out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into episode four, Big Week. Here we go. Who the hell is busting at Jamie's door? Oh, oh, training going? begins. Yeah, we start at 4 a.m. Thought he said five. How was that a joke? Because it's 4 a.m. <laughs> we start at 4, so you can do three workouts a day instead of two. Okay, but it's 4 a.m. Do you want to be better than Zara or not? Well, how are we going to see? It's dark out. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, uh, wait. We're playing them this soon? There's still eight episodes of this season left. Fuck off, Nate. Whoops. What was that? Some semblance of remorse? Uh. Good morning, Sassy Smurf. Good morning, Robert, huh? We have a good time together, yeah? They're called simultaneous orgasms, Ted, yes. Yeah, no. But I mean, also all the talking and laughing and all that stuff. Yeah. Sure. Well, apart from your dreadful puns. <laughs> well, I was just thinking maybe we could go on an actual date sometime. God, no. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to consider it. Wait. <laughs> we can't date. Why not? You're a mess. I'm a mess? I mean, that's a valid point. I'm a mess too, but I'm a mess three years further on than you, so I'm more of a slight disarray. More like a slide just red sunshine, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, on the day my ex got remarried, I drank a bottle of red wine and told my Uber driver I was in love with him. When he dropped me home, I puked so much, my mouth was like an elevator from the goddamn shining. <laughs> I'm rating down to a 3.9. 3.9? Uh. Oh, God, you're a five, aren't you? Of course you're a five. How the are you a five? I don't know. I'm tidy. I say please and thank you. Sometimes I'll offer to drive if they look tired. <laughs> oh, you are such a mess. I like our status. Friends with benefits like Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher. Oh, no, no, no. I think you're thinking of 2011's other good friends turned casual lovers based rom com. No strings attached. Friends with benefits was Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake. 2011. Friends be fucking. <laughs> yeah. So let's keep things 2011. Cool and breezy. Like an Arab Spring. Mm. No. I get it, though. I get it. Before he can really settle down with anybody else, he needs to figure his shit out and not bring that along into whatever he tries to make somewhere else. Hello, you for flow? Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Just fucking everybody's right here. <laughs> Why do you only sleep with a top on? Because I get cold upstairs and hot downstairs. That's valid. I just, I, oh God. Morning. Man, that took us a high minute to get to the intro. I get that and I, I, I feel that. I relate to that very strongly, but I uh, hate skin to sheet contact for prolonged periods. I don't know. I just don't like not having something as a buffer. Shandy came up with this super fun banter promo. It uses all the single players on the team. The anonymous man you're bantering with could be a professional footballer. Oh, that's great. So it's like Colin and Danny and Sam, etc. Yeah, well, I don't think Sam's doing it anymore. Um, if possible, could I get two tickets for the Richmond West Ham match? Jack might be coming to London this weekend. Who's Jack? Jack Danvers. Hmm? the head of the VC that funded your company. <laughs> Our boss. Oof. <laughs> I can let you have some seats in my suite. Thank you so much, Rebecca. That's so kind of you and so efficient. Keely? Yeah. 
Wow, that complete shift in tone between the two of them. Especially that little underhanded comment and be like, hey, that was really great and efficient. Good job, Rebecca. Fuck you, Keely. That look she shot her after that. I thought we made some progress. Frank expects us today. So we do the opposite. Five up front. Full on attack. But Nate knows we're gonna do that. Because Nate knows that we're trying to outthink him by thinking like him. So they're just gonna go back to a two four four. We gotta stop thinking like Nate and start thinking like Nate would think we would think if Nate were thinking like us. And then do the last thing that Nate thinking like us, thinking like Nate, thinking like us would ever expect us to do. Is what we were already gonna, gonna do. And play Nate's false. Oh for our fucking love. Oh. I do have one question. Of course. Who fucking cares? Do you think Zelda will do it? Yeah, that kind of falls apart right there. Sassy ended up spending the night last night. Well, I asked her out on a proper date this morning. She turned me down cold. She said I was, and I quote, a mess. Sounds like a case for the diamond dogs. Release the house! Yeah, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> no, I thought we had him. Get back in here. Get back in here. Yes. Yes, what? You yes, are a mess. Man. Okay, expound. We're playing Nate this week, and you're acting like it's not a big deal. Nothing's different. He didn't hurt you. Hey, look, we ain't talking about Nate right now. I'm asking you if you think I'm a mess, all right? I mean, that's part of it. What do you think? I think I don't understand how you're not pissed off with Nate. <sighs> but Nate didn't hurt me. Bullshit! <laughs> yes, oh, Roy, thank you. you. Dog situation? Hey, Roy. All right, here, Roy. Roy. Hey, Roy. Hey, Roy. Hey, Roy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Little boy, come on, big boy, a little gruff with the hoo. Zava, he is a genius. I like the grounds for this one. Yeah. That's my guy. No, you can't have him. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trent's look there. We must ignore these talking faces, even when they are in our favor. Thank you, Zoro. It's actually pronounced a Zoro. Why? Because that's how my parents say it, I guess. You can be whoever you want to be. I let all of my children name themselves once they reach the age of seven. That is why my eldest is called Smingus Dingus. <laughs> hmm. Dream big, and you may never wake up. Thank you. Jesus. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but hey, lads. I agree with Zavo. Yes, it's a big fucking game, but we just got to focus, do what we do, do you know what I mean? He's right. And don't forget, yeah? Believe in believe. Yes. Oh! Oh no! No! Why thought you do that? Oh, I was just checking if I acquired a ability to chop things in half. Yeah, and what if you had? Fellas, someone ripped this in half. Oh, they're finding out it was just put back up like nothing had happened. Oh, look at that little fucking window table. What are you doing? He's gonna try to shoot a shot again, or what? Oh my god, god damn it, Nate. Hello, Jade. Lovely to see you again. Okay. Sorry, I've not been around much. <laughs> you haven't? No. No, I've been uh, really busy with uh, with my new job. Big, big new job, just keeping me uh, very busy. Sounds silly. Maybe you should quit your big and your busy job. <laughs> Smooth. No way. Look who's here. No fucking way. <laughs> Do you know who this is? Mm, Jason Jelly. That's right. Nope, not even close. Jason, your team this week. That's got to be our call, right? Mm. I mean, you talked a lot of shit about him in the press. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Can I pay? No, 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 no. This is on me, okay? On me. Understand? This man's money is no good here. <laughs> Never charged. Except for booze. Got to charge for booze. I didn't order any booze. It's 12 30. <laughs> you just did this. 
<laughs> then zoom away. Sit here, look right into the camera, and just pretend you're talking to an old friend. My oldest friend is Javier. How long have you known Javier? Only a couple of months, but he turns 108 years old next week. Oh. <laughs> That's not what she meant, but close enough. Okay, off you go, Danny. You may not know who I am. <laughs> How would you not know who he is? Uh, you ready, Zoro? Oh, uh, yeah, but I actually go by Van Damme now. Uh, what? <laughs> you don't know who I am, but I'm looking for someone who likes short walks on the beach so we can spend more time, you know. <laughs> and cut. Great, thanks, Van Damme. Next. Oh, cool. What was nice. that? Because I love Jean-Claude Van Damme and Zava told me I should be whoever I want to be. Okay. Yeah. Right, cool. Yeah. Alright, boys. He's so fucking hot. What's his story? Jamie. Mm. Oh, he's so cocky. But he only thinks about himself. I don't care. These two like used to. Job. Yeah, that's not really who he is anymore. But he's not accountable for his actions and what they do to others. Not special. Except. It's good idea. He is he's now. Better at making apologies. Oh God, here you are. He only thinks of his dick. Yeah. I don't think he's seen anyone in ages. Nope. I just want to know if I can bang him, babe. <laughs> what are y'all still doing here? Coach, you're going to want to watch this. Oh. Oh, who ripped the poster? I guess you can take the boy out of journalism, but you can't take journalism out of the boy. Right, you fucking ruined it now. The point is, the answer <laughs> we were looking for has arrived. We don't. A video like this could motivate a team, perhaps? Thank you for your help, Trent. May a young Robert Redford portray you in a film someday. Probably Dustin Hoffman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good night. Go home, guys. Get some sleep. He's going to delete it. Yeah, sorry for the smell. <laughs> the oil burning. It... Come on, Rupert, that was an easy one. You should know all about the sense of things burning all the way down in hell. Just haven't seen Ted since I left, and uh, we didn't leave on the best of terms. And... Or any terms at all, really. You've done nothing wrong, Nathan, I promise you. Well, uh, it's not true. So what do I say when I see him? You say nothing, apart from hello. You look him in the eye. You shake his hand, and then you beat him. With his hand. And then we go and celebrate. Okay. He's not exactly completely wrong, but he doesn't know how Nate handled certain things. Not that I think he would care at all, but I do think it changes what he said a little bit. Working late or hardly working? Well, I don't think that's how the joke goes. Oh, joke. Never mind. What's up? <laughs> I really want to win this one. I know. Everything okay? Do you want to be honest or no? Am I a mess? Of course you are. That's why we get along. <laughs> That's very true. You guys have been parallel messes. So is everything all right? Yeah, I'm good. Oklahoma. Hmm. No. I'm a work in prog mess. No. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, man. That was a nice little moment. moment. Got that turkey out of your life. I agree. Beat them. Good night, boss. Yeah, okay, so we gotta beat West Ham here, but it, it was Man City that was the big, the big thing. This is just a personal confrontation here, right? I really don't like him being in this, introducing himself into the, uh, the team dynamic. <laughs> Poor Will. Rebecca. Rupert. Wonderful to see you. Love the new hair? I haven't is changed that, my hair. Is it brimstone? You, it's perfection. Hmm. How's the little one? Julian pooing around the house. <laughs> Takes after her father. <laughs> well, <okay>. Nice. <gasps> oh, shit. Please tell me she doesn't have a stain or a tear or something and she's gonna just make it worse. 
by fixating on it. Excuse me. I've got a bit of a situation here. Or is she bleeding? Oh, thank you, but it's actually not that. Oh, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> Usually I'm like, who is it hurt. though? It's not like my vagina's on a diet. I'm on my fucking period. <laughs> Wait, is it Jack like Jacqueline? Go ahead, yeah. Down one more floor. Oh, uh, is that Nate in the back corner? Best luck out there. See that silver ass mop hiding back there, cowering. Afraid to move forward. Shit, he's just gonna hang out in here. Oh, pff, what is he doing? Listen, Ted. I, I just want to say the way I left. Nathan. Uh oh. There you are. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, here she is now. Oh, yep, um, that's it. Yeah. It's her shoes. That's her pants. I believe you have something of mine. Ah! Inside of you. Oh, fuck. You're Jack. <laughs> we all thought you were a man. Oh, it's like that old riddle. Father and son in a car wreck. Dad dies instantly. The son is rushed to an emergency room. Surgeon walks in. I can't operate on this boy. He's my son. How is it possible? Because she's a woman. She's she's sperm donor. Is it a simulation? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so I assume Jack is short for Jacqueline, right? No, uh, it's short for my father wanted a boy. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Sit down now, outside. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, welcome. We are not allowed to take drinks to our seat, so if we want to get plastered, we should probably do that now. <laughs> wow, trying to suck up real hard, aren't you? Not even hiding it. My father's obsessed with Rebecca. I hope she doesn't try and kill her and wear her skin as a suit. You never know. It's gonna be a good day. This is a Richmond pub. It's all right, mate. He's with me. Get the fuck out! <laughs> it's a full house for today's battle between West Ham United and Zava's AFC Richmond. Zav, well, hold on. Get shut the fuck up. No. Any predictions? I'll stop making predictions, Arlo, because I was never wrong. Got to the point I was worried. I was the one making things happen. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> that's hilarious. Have fun out there today, yeah? <laughs> he could only let himself be vulnerable with no other eyes out there. When they were alone in the elevator, that's when he wanted to break that facade down. But the moment someone else or all these eyes are on him, He's stiff as shit and closing up everything again. I'm glad that he does feel some semblance of regret, though. And he stays nil nil thanks to an amazing save by Zorro. Van Dam! Why? Well, we'll probably have to dive into his childhood for that answer. <laughs> that could be the one. Oh, Jamie, damn. Fuck. Somebody just sling some holy water at his ass. I just wanted to tell you that I believe in you, and I know that I've been putting an awful lot of pressure on you to win today. But I just, just want you to forget all about that for yourself and have fun. Okay. Mm. Thank you. I believe in you, Ted. And it's intense. <laughs> Remember, have fun! Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> this is exciting! Woo! <gasps> oh, they sh they're showing them the tape. Now look at it. Killers. Frankly, Ted, sometimes that's good. <laughs> Ted just doesn't like playing this way, man. Ooh, that's Ooh. Awful. It's a deserved red, and Rich will play almost the entire second half with ten men. Uh oh. 
Oh, they're playing like Italians. I know. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, this is backfiring. Yeah, this was not a good idea. Oh, God, even Danny. Oh! What the fuck? And it's four one to the hammers. It went from evenly matched to unevenly matched to lighter match on. So we got our asses kicked. Richmond Soda sided themselves we've never seen before. They played angry, dirty, and ugly. Which are also the names of Zava's three youngest kids. <laughs> wow. Sending out Van Damme was a mistake. He played with passion. Passion is a word we use when we talk about love. It is also a word we use to describe a crime. Sometimes it is also a fruit. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh, wow. Not surprised. We fucked up. We overcorrected and played with hate. Mm. Be great if you yelled at us a bit. Please. <laughs> Call us pieces of shit or something. Now. You're gonna no. hit us. Get it over with. Tried something new, didn't work. Big whoop. What a fucking arsehole. I know. <laughs> you have to feel pretty good about yourself after that win, yeah? What about Ted? Quite a snob not to shake his hand at the end of the game. Oof. Guess I just got caught up in the excitement of it all, you know. Excuse me a minute, I don't think. Mm. Coach Shelley, Mr. Mannion asked me to give you this. He'll meet you there in an hour. Damn. That's a perfect example of him being blinded by all of this prestige, fanciness, and success, etc. Come on, old man. Sway past your bedtime. No. I saw you with your assistant. Your daughter deserves better, and so does Bex. Stop fucking around. <laughs> anyway, good news. Banter's trending. It is. Yeah. Pretty sure the change to the bio line helped. What are you talking about? Oh, God, no. Who did this? I did. This afternoon when I uploaded the vids. No, 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 no. This is the opposite. What Banter is trying to do. They're gonna love it. I've literally tripled their subscribers in an hour. You need to change this back now. It was really lovely to meet you. You too. Excuse me. Damn, man. Lots of synergy just not happening right now. A lot of people are just desynced. Allow me to introduce Anastasia. Huge fan. Oh my god, you're famous. <laughs> so are you. Yeah, see the kind of man you're looking up to here? Yeah! God. Let's go, coach. <laughs> wow. That's a good change of pace. Hi, Dad. Hey. Is everything okay? I want to say something. Real quick, um, well, you know, this whole thing with you and Dr. Jacob really ticks me off. And I'm upset that we didn't ever really get to talk about it before it all started. I understand that me saying all this um, might be the wrong thing to do, but I just feel like not saying it well, wouldn't be the right thing either. Because we got to raise this little boy together, you know? We're stuck with each other. We don't share grandkids. <laughs> I love you, Michelle. And I love Henry. And I love our family, no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course. Well, I'll uh, talk to y'all soon. Good night. You, know, you gotta confront these issues, man. Acknowledge you got them, adapt, and move on. Hmm. 
Damn. Like, just ignoring that there was a problem between him and Nate doesn't resolve the situation, but also tackling it in the way that they tackled it wasn't necessarily the right direction either. Getting heated in the way, and it was definitely exaggerated and played up for the drama of the situation and really to get under the skin of the team because I do feel like it would definitely light a fire under them, but they that to that extent was just a little blown up for again the entertainment value of the show and stuff like that but and it was funny man even like going to the point where like uh danny was getting into the swing of it all but even before all that was happening too we saw uh jamie was actually taking more shots he wasn't passing it to zava when like was the plan so he's still trying to improve and prove himself capable on the field on the pitch himself i like that we kind of saw that kind of shining in there but much like Nate, too, he's not able to confront these things, too. Like, he regrets, kind of like with the team, the overcorrection, the way they lashed out, acted out in their emotion and their rage and all that kind of stuff is similar to what he did when he tore the sign and then just abandoned everybody. And now he's reflecting, looking back, trying to figure out how to navigate this relationship, this dynamic. Now he's wrestling with these feelings about what he did to Ted, what happened, the way they left, about where he is now. And I think he's starting to see just who he's working for versus who he was with before and what that means. So like my hope that there is a redemption arc, like a fall from a grace, but then a return to it for Nate at the end of this road. I hope that is the case because we do see that at least he has genuine remorse for his actions, the way he acted and everything. But Ted needs to continue to work on himself, but he also needs to acknowledge when he's got these issues and take a stance on it. Avoiding the problem is not going to really help anything either. You know, no Sharon in this episode at all. I hope we get like a little session with them soon because I think that needs to be addressed. Obviously, the revelation of what he learned about his ex-wife's current situation as well. And he's like, he, again, he finally, he was like, hey, I'm, this may not be appropriate. I know we're not together. I know you've moved on, but I have to get this off my chest. I have to address it. I can't bottle it up. No matter how this is, I just need to get it out there. It may not be the smartest thing, but it's what I need. And he did. He says, hey, I love Henry. I love you. I love this family, no matter what it looks like. I like that he put that on there. Even though he hates it over that he doesn't like it, he doesn't like how this all turned out, he doesn't like that she is with their, their former doctor, especially going through those texts and seeing his, the doctor, Dr. Jacobs himself, be like, hey, I'm rooting for you guys. You guys are really making some progress, all this, and then he ends up with his wife. That's so shitty. Like, there's no way that that isn't shitty. You know, he's like, okay, that is the situation we are in. But you know what? Whatever this family looks like, I'll be there. You know, we're stuck together to make sure that this kid grows up knowing that both his parents love him and are there for him. Regardless of whatever transpired, he's not letting that bury or sunder what they at least have left. And I like that they address like what's well, something I said at the beginning end of last episode as well about him maybe moving on now that his wife has as well. But obviously that he needs to get a handle on his current issues first. I like the sassy. He was like, hey, no, who pop, hold on. Nope, you're a mess right now. I'm just a little less of a mess than you. We're both messes. Maybe this isn't a good idea. And definitely shut that down right now. And then obviously he went and had a diamond dog session where he's like, hey, am I a mess? I was like, the reality of the situation is like, you've been a mess for a little while, man. Like you're just only now questioning that now that somebody called it, said it to your face. I mean, You've been, you've been pretty fucked up, man. If the panic attacks weren't an indicator enough, I, I don't know what else is. And then, like I said, Shandy, like she's coming in here. And while she was kind of playing around in the environment well enough in the last episode, despite the way things kind of were lingering about that text message about the alcohol and all that, she's pursuing success at the expense of integrity right now. In some cases, might be rewardable might be something to look up to, something you might want to shoot for, aim for, but this isn't why Keeley built this. This isn't why all that. Shandy is like tunneling for numbers. She, that's all she's trying to do here. She's she's aiming for success for success. And that's not what Keeley's after. She's genuinely trying to build a thing that she believes in. And this whole new slogan, want to date a celebrity? It's, it's selling a version of banter that is not what she built it to be. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, but I got all these subscribers. We were blowing up right now. We're trending. 
after that video I put out there. That's not the point. It's not why we're here. And then the way Richmond was playing and then the way Keeley, you know, was uh, having that situation unfurl right there with their investor, all this was kind of coming together. You could see it on her face, on Jack's face, that she was just like, e, what am I working with right now? Then Rebecca, obviously, she really needed to win this. And, you know, she was like trying to pretend that she not wasn't really obsessed with that by the second half when she went down to be like, Ted, I believe in you. Just have fun. Just have fun. I believe in you. I, I feel like part of that was a little sarcastic on top of the overtop way she was trying to present that. I think she was trying to convince herself more than anything. Obviously, she we didn't get this win. We got completely devastated. Our coaches reaction to this whereas before i would have agreed where i feel like the team needs to have a little bit of a fight in them a little bit of a hunger to win they like they said they overcorrected. this was not the time to play that gamble to play that card i do agree that sometimes ted is a little too reserved in situations but this was not that situation though again like i said earlier that they definitely played up and exa over exaggerated i think the natural reaction people would have had to that for the entertainment value because they were just fucking, th they threw the game, like, out of it. And it's like, not even at Nathan. They didn't do anything towards Nathan. It was towards the players themselves. But with all that said, though, Rebecca caught Rupert once again doing what Rupert does and is just never satisfied with anybody. All these women in his life, they're just playthings. He doesn't care about anyone. I don't genuinely think he cares about a single human being in any way that's more than just how they benefit him or serve him in a given moment. And I just like that we see this moment with her connecting with new Rebecca and this way where we just see them kind of getting along, taking jabs at Rupert back and forth. And then he's off sleeping around with his secretary. And then Nate even sees that when he's being lavished with all these gifts. And yet again, these gifts, when he was going to talk and to Ted and try to apologize yet again, something is there, whether it's Rupert at the elevator or his assistant here be like, hey, here's this little card. You can come to the VIP lounge now. You can come hang out with all the big guys. And then it's it's all these things just being dangled in front of him, these shiny balls that just keep distracting him from the actual things of value. And by that point, once that distraction was said and done, you know, he missed his chance with Ted. Ted was gone. So now we're still left lingering with all of this. And then he goes there. He goes to this place and then he sees Rupert leaving off with her with his hand on her hip and everything. And, and he's like taking note. He's seen through this veil, this illusion of success that Rupert is putting on. I don't know. I just, I just, I hope for everybody in the end, I will say the, the big thing out of this whole ordeal, the one I feel like positive light, aside from Ted confronting the situation with his ex-wife, I think that is a positive to be said about this episode because a lot of this was a lot of crumbling, a lot of deconstruction, a lot of uh, kind of dark night of the soul situation for the team. I think that was a little bit of beacon of hope there was that. And then the Roy and Jamie stuff, seeing Jamie actually being like motivated at the end to get out and start training. Uh, I think that's genuine progress because, again, I think that's reflected nicely, too, in that scene where they were doing the little shoots and where Keeley's describing the old Jamie, but then recognizing how much he's changed because she's like, oh, yeah, he used to do all this stuff. And then she's just like, but actually, he's been doing a lot better now. He, actually, he just doesn't do that anymore. He actually takes a, he takes accountability for certain things now. Huh. It's like he changed. And, of course, Shannon's like, I just want to know if I can fuck him. Like she's, she's, she gives me that, like while she is coming up and she's clawing and she's doing her job well, I don't think she's doing it right, if that makes any sense. I think that also shows in her personal interactions as well. But anyway, I don't know, a lot to dig into here. I'm sure there's some stuff I missed, but guys, what do you think of the episode? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, we'll see the full length reaction. As always, you can check it out over on Patreon or forget my channel, I'll get you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends Manny Share, Ryan, Karen, York, or Scott, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jay Contrell, Eric Official, Casey Wood, Russell Crockett, Justin Smith, and Brendan Boyd. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.